I believe I'm on. Okay, now I am on. Now Erica has me on too. A couple of things about our service this morning. We are going to have three baptisms. And then we are also going to have the anniversary of baptism, which will take place if you... By the way, turn to page five of your bulletin. You'll see there, after the sharing of the peace, a hymn. Nobody knows how that hymn got there. <laughs> so please ignore that. Ignore the one that says, On, the, on Jordan's bank, banks the Baptist cry, which would be the one after the sharing of the peace. That is correct. And then, if you turn to right uh, on page 8, normally where the children's sermon would go, we will have the anniversary of baptism. Just so you know what's going on. Our gospel lesson is the same gospel lesson every single year on the Sunday after Easter. It is the gospel lesson that has the story of Thomas. So we're going to look at doubt, unbelief, and faith today. Let's uh, prepare our hearts for worship by singing our gathering hymn, We Know That Christ Is Raised. Today we have a rare privilege in that an entire family is going to be baptized today. This is Keith, Amy, and Alex Boatwright. Dear friends, we rejoice today that the Boatwrights, through baptism, are becoming members of the body of Christ and inheritors of God's kingdom. It is an opportunity for all of us to renew our faith. 
What can we do to become children of God? We can do nothing. Only God can make his, his children. Is that what happens in baptism? Yes. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. Waters of baptism, we are joined to the death and resurrection of our Lord and so are born again into the family of God. These are the promises that you are making today as you come to receive the gift of baptism. You are entrusted with responsibilities to live among God's faithful people, to come to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, know the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, read the Holy Scriptures, and be a loving family nurtured in faith and prayer so that you may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer by saying, I do. People of God, do you promise to support Amy, Keith, and Alex and pray for them in their new life in Christ? I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. So, Keith, Amy, and Alex, I ask you, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer by saying, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Let us confess the faith we believe. So to everyone, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. You come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of water. Through water, you saved the people of Israel as they crossed the Red Sea. Through water, you saved Noah and his family, all eight of them, during the flood. Through water, your son came and was baptized by John, where you proclaimed him, your son, your beloved, one in whom you were well pleased. We pray that you bless this water with your Holy Spirit and make it a water of washing, a water of healing, a water of salvation a water where your Holy Spirit will come and through it you claim the boat rights as your own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who's going to be first? The courageous one, Alex. <laughs> I'm going to move this closer, Alex, so I don't have to lift you up. And just put your head over this. Alex Boatwright, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
And now look at me, Alex. Alex, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. <laughs> Keith, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, Keith, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And Amy, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Amy, I baptize you. You have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for making Amy, Keith, and Alex your own and raising them up to a new life through baptism. Pour out your Holy Spirit and strengthen them. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. And now watch Vicki. These candles, every year, on April 3rd, you can get them out and light them and remember the anniversary of your baptism. This lighted candle is given to you to remind you that the light of the world has come into your life. You are to let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And the congregation is supposed to have a response here, and they don't. But the congregation says, we welcome you into the Lord's family as workers with us in the kingdom of God. Amen. And now, everyone rise. By the way, I think this deserves an applause. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. We will sing the third verse of We Are Baptized in Christ Jesus. O God of life, 
You reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. When they had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in the name, yet here you are have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Revelation. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from, from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be kingdom priests, serving the God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his ascent, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th, the 20th chapter. I will be reading the version called, the translation called, The Message. Later on that day, the disciples had gathered together, but fearful of the Jews, had locked all the doors in the house. Jesus entered, stood among them, and said, Peace to you. Then he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples, seeing the master with their own eyes, were exuberant. Jesus repeated his greeting, Peace to you. Just as the Father sent me, I send you. Then he took a deep breath and breathed into them. Receive the Holy Spirit. He said, if you forgive forgive someone's sins, they're gone for good. If you don't forgive sins, what are you going to do with them? But Thomas, sometimes called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we saw the Master. But he said, unless I see the nail holes in his hands, put my finger in the nail holes and stick my hand in his side, I won't believe it. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the room. This time, Thomas was with them. Jesus came through the locked doors, stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he focused his attention on Thomas. Take your finger and examine my hands. Take your hand and stick it in my side. Don't be unbelieving. Believe. Thomas said, My master, my God. Jesus said, So you believe because you've seen with your own eyes. Even better blessings are in store for those who believe without seeing. Jesus provided far more God-revealing signs than are written down in this book. These are written down so that you will believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and in the act of believing, have real and eternal life in the way he personally revealed it. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. Those who are here for the anniversary of baptism, we will gather around the font. And if you do not have your baptismal candle, don't despair. I have plenty. All right. Parents, I want you to be close enough to be able to dip your finger in that baptismal font. When God claimed these beloved young people in holy baptism, we made sacred promises. Parents, you promised to faithfully bring your children to worship 
to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and to provide for their instruction in the Christian faith. Sponsors and this congregation promised to nurture them in the Christian faith and to support them and pray for them in their new life in Christ. Today, we keep and renew our promises. Okay. Dip your finger in the font and get it plenty wet. And on your loved one, that you may hear the good news of Christ, the word of life, parents say, receive the sign of the cross on your ears. That you may see the light of Christ illuminating your way. Parents say, receive the sign of the cross on your eyes. that you may sing the praise of Christ, the joy of the church. Parents say, receive the sign of the cross on your lips. That God may dwell within you by faith. Parents say, receive the sign of the cross on your heart. That you may bear the gentle yoke of Christ in serving. Parents receive the sign of the cross on your shoulders. That God's mercy may, may be known in your works. Parents, receive the sign of the cross on your hands. That you may follow in the way of Christ. Parents, receive the sign of the cross on your feet. Jesus, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Now, when you were baptized, an assistant minister handed your parents a candle. Maybe you have that candle in your hand. Maybe not. But that assistant minister then said, we're going to light these candles first. your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We are proud that you are part of God's family and workers with us in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the new life you give us through holy baptism. Especially, we ask you to bless each of these young people on the anniversary of their baptism. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and increase in them your gifts of grace the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, Almighty God, who gave you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgives you all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may go back to your seats and you may put those candles out whenever you like.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Faith, doubt, and unbelief. Let's start with a story for, about Rosalie Grady. Rosalie felt she had made a terrible mess of her life. She was 28, had three young boys, had, is, it was divorced, so she was a single mother. She started going to, school, to church with a friend, but she could not believe what the pastor said about God's grace and God caring about her and God loving her. One evening on the way home from work, she picked up the kids at school and daycare, stopped at the grocery store, and while there, she saw a package of ice cream cones that she remembered back in her childhood was such a joy for their family. These particular ice cream cones had uh, on the bottom it with, um, with, with food stain, whatever you call that stuff, <laughs> each, each cone was marked with someone's name. And she re just remembered what fun that was when she was a kid, so she brought those home. Didn't really tell the kids about it much, grabbed a, a gallon of ice cream, and when they got home after supper, she says, okay, we're going to have an ice cream cone. So she got out the, the ice cream, and then she said, notice these are special cones on the bottom with food coloring, is our names. So everyone started, she said, go ahead and look for your names. So carefully they went through them all and trying to find their names and found them and they giggled and laughed and had a good time doing that. They had their ice cream. She put them to bed. She was doing the dishes and cleaning up in the kitchen and she felt so terrible about her life she actually started crying, weeping. And she's thinking to herself, Dear God, and she prayed, Dear God, I have no idea if you exist. I just need help. My life is such a mess. And after she said that prayer, she started thinking about the fun they had with the ice cream cones and started smiling and laughing and she thought that was really nice that she could finally smile after all these months after her divorce. And she thought, you know, I'm going to have an ice cream cone. So she reached, she got out the ice cream out of the freezer, reached for the nearest cone and looked at the bottom to see whose name was there. It said, Jesus. I suppose it was supposed to be Jesus for a Hispanic uh, person, but it was Jesus. And she took that as a word from God that he does care about her. Well, the good news today we see in our gospel lesson is that Jesus does not abandon us in our despair. But we have a God who comes to us, who meets us at our time of need, just as he came to meet Thomas. Three things I'd like to cover in this sermon. Doubt and faith go hand in hand. There is no such thing as faith if there is not doubt. Believing is seeing. They say we, say with, we, we see with our brains, not with our eyes. Well, we could say we see with our hearts. 
We have a very personal God who comes to us in our despair. Jaroslav Pelikan said this about the resurrection. He said, if the resurrection is true, if Christ is raised from the dead, nothing else matters. If Christ did not rise from the dead, nothing else matters. For Jaroslav Pelikan, the resurrection was the key. If Christ was raised from the dead, nothing else matters. If he did not rise from the dead, nothing else matters. Well, Thomas is in that despair of feeling that Christ did not rise from the dead. He was in what we call soul despair. That's the problem. Soul despair. I, by the way, this is my favorite Doubting Thomas picture by Stephen Rue. I've showed it to you before. Stephen Rue is the son of an ELCA pastor. He lives in the state of Washington. I tried to buy that painting and he had already sold it. He wanted $1,800 anyway. <laughs> Soul despair. Mother Teresa, back in 1951, she made a prayer to God. And this is something, be careful about your prayers, because God does answer prayer. And she prayed this prayer to God. She prayed that she would be allowed to share in the pain and loneliness that Jesus suffered on the cross. When Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? She prayed, dear Lord, let me feel that, let me share in that pain and loneliness. And the rest of hi is history. For 50 years, as she worked in Calcutta among the poor, she said she felt utter spiritual despair and would pray often, my God, why have you forsaken me? Could not feel for all those years that God loved her. Well, God answered her prayer. How did she deal with it? She remained faithful in mission, in ministry. That's how she dealt with it. Um, we, uh, Most great spiritual leaders that I have encountered or read about have gone through tremendous darkness of the soul. Uh, Martin Luther did so, and we'll talk about him in a moment. Charles Spurgeon, a very famous um, British preacher from the last century, he wrote this, If you have ever been dragged through the mire and clay of soul despair, if you have been turned upside down and wiped out like a dish as to all your own strength and pride, and have been filled with the joy and peace of God through Jesus Christ, I will trust you among 50,000 infidels. Whenever I hear the skeptic's stale attacks upon the Word of God, I smile within myself and think, why you simpleton? How can you urge such trifling objections? I have felt in the contentions of my own unbelief ten times greater difficulties. 
I have felt in the contentions of my own unbelief ten times greater difficulties. A poet has written, Doubt is pain too lonely to know, and that faith is his twin brother. Paul Tillich expressed the relationship between faith and doubt this way. Faith is courage that conquers doubt, not by removing it, by taking it in as an element into itself. You see, there's a difference between doubt and unbelief. Unbelief is doubt plus denial. And some people get to that point, they're filled with denial, which keeps them from ever having faith because their denial keeps them from even wanting to deal with their doubt. That's unbelief. Martin Luther uh, felt unbelief uh, was a state of melancholy that you could be lost in and just filled with utter de despair the rest of your life. So we see one key to dealing with doubt was what Mother Teresa did, keep busy in mission, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Unbelief is doubt plus denial. How can we have faith? Others. Most important thing, others. Notice what Thomas did. He was not with the others. And when we cut ourselves off from others, we cut ourselves off from a tremendous resource. We don't realize uh, how powerful our relationships with people are. Um, let me uh, share with you Of course, we were created to be in relationship, in relationship to one another, in relationship to God. In, G in Genesis, when we were created, how did God create us? He created us in His image. So when we see other people and relate to them, we're relating to the very image of God. No matter who they are, no matter what their status in life is, we're relating to the very image of God. There's something powerful in relationship. Daniel Goleman, uh, in, uh, talking about social intelligence, the scientific community has discovered that relationships wire us together, brain to brain. Remember a couple of weeks ago I told you the, about the study they did that was on National Public Radio where a... Uh, woman participated in the study where they flashed an X on a screen, a red X, and when she saw the red X, she'd get a shock, and then they'd read her brain waves, and she, they would become all scattered and, and uh, erratic. And then when they just showed the X, even if she didn't get shocked, she went into that erratic brain pattern. The only thing that helped when a friend that she knew for 20 years came and held her hand when they flashed the red X, her brain waves were calm. There's something about others that we're tied to that helps us, that gives us strength. I spent some time with Ralph uh, Hurley this week, as well as some other people did. We had to do a little bit of an intervention. But uh, Ralph was so proud of his basketball team in 1955. Remember Ralph? A few inches shorter than me. 
his 1955 high school basketball team were state champions. Ralph was one of the starters. Ralph was a key player. He made all state. But he said, we went up against a team that was better than us. But they couldn't beat us because we were a team. They functioned together as one. They had that magic moment when relationships really came together and meant something. Well, relationships. Goldman continues, Neuroscience has discovered that our brain's very design makes it sociable, inexorably drawn into an intimate brain-to-brain link-up whenever we engage with another person. That neutral bridge lets us affect the brain and so the body of everyone we interact with just as they do with us. So we have this interaction with people, brain to brain. We might not think it, brain to brain. When we gather together for worship, why do we worship? Well, it's important to worship and give glory to God. But brain to brain, God is doing something to us. Why do we gather for Bible studies? Is it important to study the Bible? Yeah, but it's more important, the community that we gain. I believe today because of others in my life. So others are a key. Believe it or not, mission is a key. That's what uh, Mother Teresa found. One of the things, if you remember, uh, a few years ago, several years ago, before we added on to our building, we had sent a number of people off to um, Stephen's Ministries to learn about breakthrough leadership. And there we learned that we should always have a bee hog in front of us at all times. Remember what a bee hog was? <laughs> a big, holy, uh, what well, was a hag? Big, holy, audacious goal in front of us. And we used to do that all the time. The daycare ministry was a bee hag. The um, Hispanic ministry was a bee hag. A number of people here were part of that and, and their lives were blessed by that. We haven't had a bee hag for a while. Do you know why? Life with a building. That's why pastors leave when buildings are built. Life with a building in ministry is different than, than without. So many new things to do. A few of us went to a um, meeting at the Council of Churches about poverty and homelessness in Springfield. We came up with a great idea. I hope it becomes our next BHAG. Do something. Our part. Our unique part and helping with homelessness. Mission helps take care of doubt. Well, Martin Luther said, we too often concentrate on feelings. Uh, feeling is against faith, he said. And very often, faith is against feeling. I don't feel like doing that. Our feelings are very often our fears. He says faith goes against that feeling. I have often, he wrote, I have often said before that feeling and faith are two different things. It is the nature of faith not to feel, 
and to lay aside reason and close the eyes to submit absolutely to the word and to follow it in life and death. Feeling, however, does not extend beyond that which we have apprehended by reason in the senses. I can't, I don't feel like doing that. We don't have enough money to do that. I can't believe, really, can I? All those feelings, Luther says, go against faith. And faith has to go against that. And you step forward, and you believe, and you do. Your actions show that you believe. Well, the good news today, as I said, We have a God who's so personal, he comes to us. It isn't up to us only. Our loving God comes to us. Let me end with one last story. A young woman who had been a faithful church member, her husband died in a crazy accident. Her husband of two years had died two months before. She hadn't been in church for two months. She couldn't take it. She didn't think she believed. And she sat in the pew holding their 10-month-old baby who was asleep in her arms. And she couldn't listen to the sermon. So she, because she was just, her mind was just filled with the thoughts, what am I going to do? How am I going to get through life? God, I don't even know if I believe in you. Is there a God? And as she sat there, lost in her thoughts, she just felt in the back of her mind a voice that said, Turn to Luke 16. And she's going, Luke 16, what can I learn from Luke 16? I've read it probably three times in my lifetime. I'm not going to get anything out of Luke 16. She felt the impression, turn to Luke 16. So Lisa Joe Cox turned to Luke 16. And there in the margin, in her husband's handwriting, it simply said, I love you, Mark. Did God answer her prayer that day? Did God in Christ come to her that day? Well, there's all kinds of reasons to doubt. She believed that he did. Well, today, do not despair. Today, God in Christ comes to us. Today, we can believe. Amen.
Rooted in the abundant life and love of Christ Jesus, we pray for the life of the church, the lives of people in need, and the life of all creation. Holy God of resurrection, you are in the midst of us in this community, and you invite us to welcome and to include as friends those who have not yet experienced the reality of Christ's risen life. Help us to offer our acceptance and love to all our neighbors that we may be a community of reconciliation and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of creation, we love your world and everything in it, although we don't always live as if we do. Breathe new life into all creation. Set all things in order that abundance may come forth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open paths of cooperation between nations to care for refugees, survivors of natural disaster, and people living through wars. Bless the efforts of peacemaking troops, diplomats, and relief organizations to foster peace in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Healer of our every ill, you have absorbed all human suffering and pain into your body through Jesus and raised him with power to become our wounded healer. Grant the comfort of your grace to those for whom we pray, especially Joe Boyce, Dan Carlson, Pam Cole, Lucy and Lyle Dolly, Vivian Donnell, Sandy Drake, Ron Fells, Mary Lou Fisher, Christy Harrison, Ralph Hurley, Tina Law, Ellen Malcolm, Chris Marquardt, Willis Melgren, Liam Miller, Eddie Miner, Norma Mueller, Stan Nelson, Irma Owens, Denise Newbold, Bennett Shanks, John Stamper, and Harvey Welch. Are there any others? You have united yourself with the saints at rest through Jesus Christ. Comfort those wounded by grief. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We deliver all this into your care, O God, trusting in the work of your Holy Spirit to bring all things into the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. that they are uh, listed in this month's try, try, try this one and Erica if you put up the orange mic that better? yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> Maybe I'd do better without the body. <laughs> no, just got start talking. <laughs> I go I ahead. I... Microphone.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and Merciful Father, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his peace. Amen. Sing his praise, tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice, proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, Alleluia, Alleluia. We give you thanks, O God, that you make your home with us, bringing heaven to earth in this holy meal. Fill us with your spirit as we go from here, that we may wipe away tears, tend to those in mourning and pain, seek the healing of nations, and bring to earth the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. One to remind you that the bishop is coming on April 17th, and there's a sign-up sheet two hours on that afternoon from 3 to 5. Uh, and it's an experience you can only have once, once a year, <laughs> the bishop coming to our area. Um, I will be teaching for the next few weeks a new member class, and we're going to meet in the library. And, by the way, anybody can come to that. We're going to hit some basics about the Lutheran understanding of the Christian faith. I think that's all I have. It's been a long service. Thank you for your patience. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. That the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples. Go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God.